Okay, we're going to look at the B vector, the third vector in our TNB frame. Um, so the B vector is called a unit binormal vector. That's what the B stands for, binormal vector to the curve. Uh, and so we want to think about this definition. This is how the B vector is defined as T cross N, T cross N. So that's something that you will need to make sure that you know uh, how that B vector is defined. Okay, so based on that definition of that B vector, there are a couple of important properties that we can describe about that B vector. Um, B is defined in terms of the arc length parameter. Remember that T and N are both defined in terms of the arc length parameter S. So therefore B is defined in terms of S as well. Um, so that means that this B vector is really about the geometry of the curve and is independent of whether something's moving fast or slow or speeding up or slowing down as it moves along the curve. So that's key about all of these vectors, that they're really focused on the geometry of the curve being defined in terms of the arc length. Um, B is perpendicular or normal to both T and N. That should be obvious from the definition. We know that when we cross product two vectors, we get a third vector that is perpendicular to both of the other two. So that's obvious from the definition. Um, the other thing that actually falls straight out of the definition but might not be quite as obvious is that B is a unit vector. Um, so remember when we cross product two vectors, we get what the result represents a directed area. The directed part is the perpendicular to both. And then the area, so the magnitude of B would be the area formed by T and N. And since T and N are perpendicular and both one unit long, the area formed by a parallelogram formed by those would be a square that's one by one, and so one unit uh, of measure there for that square, so a unit vector. All right, so those things are all uh, important from the, from the definition. You do need to make sure that you know this definition. When we looked at the n and the t vector, we also looked at alternate formulas for calculating them so that we did not have to use the s parameterization to calculate them. And um, fortunately for the b vector, you don't need to memorize anything else if you have t and n defined in terms of T parameter, any parameter, not necessarily just the arc length parameter, then you can also calculate B the same way. So this works for the definition, provided these are both given in terms of S as they're defined. It also works for the calculating formula if you have both of these vectors given in terms of T. And so it's pretty straightforward to just do a cross product calculation there. But what I want to talk about kind of the rest of this video is thinking about those T, N, and B vectors and what they describe about motion. All right, so I have here a football, and we want to think about the motion of a football and what the T, N, and B vectors would be doing and how they would be oriented when a football is going different directions. Okay, so I want to first of all think about if the football is just moving straight along a path here. So the path of this football would be a straight line. All right, so the T vector would be tangent to that path and one unit long. So I have here a skewer, it's one foot long, this is my unit here, so uh, one unit long, I've painted it or colored it orange, it's kind of hard to see, so tangerine was my thought there for a T vector. And so if I think about this football just going straight along here and I think about that T vector, that T vector would be going right along my direction of motion. And so then we want to think a little bit about what the N and the, then the B vectors would be doing with that. So if you think about that motion as we move right along there, that T vector is not changing. That T vector is not changing. And so if you recall that definition of N, N is defined to be dt dS divided by the magnitude of dt dS. And so that describes how T changes. So if T is not changing, then the numerator of that n vector would be zero, and so would the denominator, which means the n vector is undefined. So in this case, uh, if we're moving along a straight line, the unit tangent vector would be tangent to the curve, so right along the path, uh, but there would not be an n vector, and if there's no n vector, then there would not be a b vector as well. Both of the n and the b vector would be undefined. All right, but that's not usually how projectiles move, right? So if you throw a football 
Uh, it would move in some sort of shape, maybe sort of like a parabola, depending on drag and spin and things like that. But you can think about uh, the shape of a parabola. So if we think about uh, football moving in a shape like that, uh, still the t vector would be tangent to the direction of motion. So the way I have my t vector here would be pointing in the direction of that t vector as we move along. So the path of the object would be a parabola. The unit tangent vector would be tangent to that parabola, but basically in the same direction that I have it pointing here as I move there. All right, and so the t vector is changing. So the t vector does not stay the same. So the t vector is changing. So we should have an n vector that is defined as we go along here. And so we talked about that the n vector is defined as dt ds divided by that magnitude. So it will always be on the concave side of the curve. If you think about the t vector here, and then when it's up here, it's tipped downwards. So that n vector will be pointing downward. It is perpendicular as well. I've got a... Uh, Another skewer here that I just left natural, that's my n vector. And so that will be pointing, if I can get that stuck in here so that it looks perpendicular. My poor Nerf football here. Um, all right, so my n vector perpendicular to the t vector and on the concave side of the curve. So you can think about as that moves along what the t vector and the n vector would be doing as we move along that parabola. All right, and then thinking about the b vector, so if you use your right hand rule to think about t cross n, so put your right hand so that the, your fingers are in the direction of the t vector and that you can pull them toward the second vector in your cross product, your thumb will tell you the direction of the, of the cross product. So the b vector here is gonna be pointing back away from the screen here. And so my b vector is a blue skewer here. So I've got these three mutually orthogonal vectors here in my football, and we can think about as we move along there, the t vector starts out pointing up. Eventually, it's pretty much horizontal, and then downward. My n vector always on the concave side of this curve, right? And I'm thinking about this particular motion as really just being in two dimensions here, so there's no spin or lateral roll or, or um, movement side to side on this football. And then my B vector pointing just into the screen here. So this T vector and this N vector, if you think about this B vector, I'm gonna turn around and make the motion go in the opposite direction. So you can think about that here. So that, N, that B vector, if you look at that, that actually is not changing. It stays one unit long and it stays pointing just straight toward you when I'm moving the ball this way or the way I had it originally straight toward the back here. Right, so the B vector is not changing there. The B vector is defined, but the B vector is not changing as I move the ball this way. Okay, and then really, when you throw a football though, um, you often put spin on the football, right? So we can think about that a little bit in terms of uh, a very tight helical kind of motion around a parabola. So very tight spin around that. Uh, and so if we think about though, if I have this object moving around this parabolic shape but with a spin on it, and think about the t, n, and b vectors, you can see that the t vector would be pretty much the same way it was before, but when that football is spinning, the n and the b vectors are changing a lot. And so that's actually what we're gonna look at in the next few videos, is some ways to describe what's happening as these T, N, and B vectors change as we move along a curve. And so some, that should make you think about derivatives. Uh, so describing how the T, N, and B frame moves as an object moves along a curve and what that describes about the geometry of the motion.